Hello, everybody. It's Donna Cravata, and we are back for another installment of The Real 50 Over 50. Um, I was out last week for a procedure, and I'm back. I'm okay. <laughs> and um, today we have Iris Goldfeder with us, and Iris is the founder of Gas Stove Creative, a boutique marketing agency providing all-in-one marketing solutions for service-based businesses. And she helps business owners elevate their brand visibility and find the people who need their expertise her motto is if you're on if you're not online you're not an option and we're online so we're good <laughs> and then um so iris no longer lives in new york but she is a native new yorker so you know set your clocks cuz i give it about 3 minutes before she starts sounding like me <laughs> Wes, i'm all we, we we've been talking so already it's done it's done <laughs> oh boy so let's dive right in um, what happened when you turned 50? God, when I turned 50, um, mm. who, I, I think the first thing was, and this is going to sound, I, I stopped giving a shit what people thought. Yeah. It, it like, it was like, okay, you're 50. Don't care anymore. <laughs> um, and it was like, it, it, it was a really thing and that was 14 years ago yeah. which blows my mind that it was 14 years ago or 13 well 14 technically the end of may it'll be 14 but yeah um and then i think that um you know i was still working for people at that point um and i i just i knew there was more i've always known there was more and i've always known that i've been meant for you know greater things or whatever um, and it, you know, it was like, okay, I'm working for people. What am I going to do next? Mm -hmm. Um, so then I was working for a company that laid me off and the choice was collect unemployment or do something. Yeah. So well, I did something because so I'm not one to sit on my butt and, you know, just collect money um for doing nothing so um so yeah so that was the beginning of my 50s and um it was a lot of growth i think one of the things it was funny because when i turned 40 i remember going man the 40s were my best years mm. and then i turned 50 and part of me was freaking out because i hadn't accomplished anything that I thought I would have accomplished by that point. Um, but I didn't get depressed. I ended up getting motivated. Mm. Um, and it was like, okay, what, you know, what do we have to do? Like, what, what do we want? Where do we want to be? And what are we going to do to get there? Yeah. Well, the layoff um, probably was an opportunity. It really was. And it was one of those, it was so funny because I knew it was coming. I didn't know it was going to be on my birthday, but I knew it was coming. Um, and, you know, when when it happened, um, it was really kind of icky because the person who fired me was like, oh, I feel so bad. I I, I want to give you a hug. And I went, ew, no. Ew. Like, what, crazy? <laughs> you just, like, fired me on my birthday and you want me to hug you? Like, get the hell away from me. It was, like, the weirdest thing um <laughs> that kind of sums up society societal <laughs> issues in like a nutshell <laughs> what um and i just remember being like you're out of your mind um and then you know i started gas stove and it was like one iteration and um I, you know i think that for me, it's it's all been a growth process. It's just been growing and learning. And I don't call them mistakes because if you learn their lessons, right? So I've had a lot of lessons. Um, I started mindfulness um, mm -hmm. to really get in touch with myself and, and do the inner work because, you know, the outside is great, but if the inside isn't healthy, yeah. It it doesn't it doesn't matter. So holding. Yeah. So I did all that work and you know, now my business is successful. I have a television show on Apple TV and Roku. I have my podcast. It's like 
what? Um, and I'm going to be covering Equality Fashion Week in LA, um, May 15th through 19th. Um, Nick Casey is a phenomenal um, shoe designer or designer. Uh, and um, we met uh, by chance. <clears throat> They're going to be a guest on my show. And we were talking and I said, hey, what if I cover Fashion Week? And they were like, sure. That's amazing. I never would have asked that. Like, as the words came out of my mouth, it was like, mm. well, you didn't have a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's true, right? But but I think the thing is that's funny is that, you know, we talk about opportunities. That was one of the things that we were talking about. And I think that I had so many opportunities throughout the years, but I didn't, I didn't see them. Yeah, they didn't feel like they were for you. They didn't feel like they were for me, but I don't think I saw them. I don't think I was, I would have been ready for them right no. now. No. It's like, I see an opportunity and it's like, I see it and I grab onto it. And, um, and I think that's been a big part of my success is grabbing those opportunities. Um, Elizabeth Gilbert in her book, Big Magic has, um, it's, it's more than a passage. It's like a section of the book where she talks about, um, opportunities are always around us and they come to us. And if we don't claim them as our own, they go to somebody else. Yeah. And she shares this story where like, you know, she had pitched something that was like really big and kind of, then she forgot about it or whatever. I don't remember the details, but then she saw somebody else running with this. And it crushed her. And that's when she realized this whole concept of, you know, if we don't take them, they go someplace else. Right. So there's this, there's just such um, a beautiful like awakening um, when you realize that there are these opportunities out there for all of us and they're always there. And the way that we get to see them is by doing that inner work because, yeah we have to heal all those parts that are just fragmented from one thing or another before we could really feel deserving of those opportunities. And um, what we had um, discussed earlier was talking about, you know, the following of the breadcrumbs, the finding of the opportunities and, the, and, and that progression of um, going from <clears throat> not seeing them to, being so ready to claim them. So let's talk a little bit about the path and the things that you've done and, and the opportunities and the way that they unfolded so people can follow along on your story and see how all of these other things that you've done have kind of fit into your, your big origin story, right? Because your origin story just has totally changed. Oh, completely. So, you know, it's funny because I'm not like the typical you know, success story where, you know, I have a master's degree and I went to school and I did all this stuff. You know, for me, it was, you know, I was homeless when I was 19. Um, I suffered from probably arrested development because um, I had no idea what adults did with money and all of the things. Um, and, you know, I left New York in, I want to say like 98, um, moved to Chicago and basically reinvented myself. Um, and when we moved to Indiana, it was like, how am I going to make the money that I'm making in Chicago? You know, like it, yeah, it was, a, it was a big world. thing. Yeah. So I ended up going into newspaper advertising sales. Um, and everybody my whole life was like, you should be in sales. You should be in sales. And I was like, no, I don't want to work on commission. I'll never eat, you know. Um, so I worked for this newspaper. And that's where I really built my reputation was, you know, I wouldn't sell them anything that they didn't need. And my manager would get pissed at me because she's like, you have to go out and you have to sell this. And I'm like, but they don't belong in there. And I'm like, well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it kind of does. I mean, work. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like it does matter because... So people started realizing that I was not going to sell them something that they didn't need. Um, then I ended up working for a web development company where I learned all of um, my skills, you know, in that area. Um, and that was like a whole nother story. We'll just leave that out. Um, but each job I had, yeah. 
really gave me the skill set that I needed to be able to open gas stove. Yeah. Um, and then even when I opened gas stove 10 years ago, I wasn't ready. I, it was just like, I didn't want to collect unemp unemployment. So I was going to do something. Um, and the first six months, um, we had so much business and I had an amazing pipeline and then I had to get shoulder surgery. Um, and that knocked me out for a month and that month cost me that pipeline. Mm -hmm. So when I came out of that, I had to start from scratch, um, which we did, uh, but it took a while. Um, but we still didn't know what we were. And yeah. then, um, that partnership ended and I entered into a, a different partnership with somebody and we did this other company. Um, and that ended two years ago. Um, and in between that, I got COVID and we talked about this and I, you know, had this condition that I thought <coughs> I was going to die. I didn't realize I was waiting a year to die. And when I went to the doctor and he said, you're going to be okay. It was like something just snapped and, you know, people have that, they almost die and they have that experience of, you know, uh, I'm going to do something now. And for me, I didn't realize it until I knew I was going to be okay. Um, a year later and I called Kofi, I said, okay, let's do that podcast. <laughs> and then it was like, okay, we have gas stove. What are we going to do? What are we going to do with this? Um, and one of my first clients, um, was a bank. Actually, I'd been working with them before, um, but they became one of my first clients. So we started doing promotional items and they needed video and we started doing video and then all of these things. And it was like, wait a minute, I have experience in every single freaking thing that, you know, these people need. So as it went on, I started working with a business coach. And then after that, it was like, okay, I know what, you know, who I am, I know what my business is and I know who my, who my market is. And our niche is that we're the marketing agency that you work with when you don't want to deal with 20 different people to get your marketing done. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there went the business. And so that, that was taken care of. And then the podcast was doing, you know, really well. And then all of a sudden I was asked to, um, my friend, Nicole Glover calls me and goes, Hey, I have an opportunity, but my audience is like eight and nine figure businesses. This may be good for you. So I made a call. Next thing I know, I'm speaking at the VC Europe X conference. It's like a four day conference. So I did a talk on marketing and then they said, Hey, would you keynote, you know, the final panel and we could do it on LGBTQIA plus businesses. And I said, sure. <laughs> what? I have never <laughs> keynoted anything. I was like, are you, you know, and I'm, and I said to my wife, I'm like, can we curse on here? You know, so I was like, I was like, why the fuck did I say yes? <laughs> I've never done it, you know? And she's like, you're going to be fine. So then I, you know, pulled my tribe in and, you know, we got really good um, panelists for it mm -hmm. and it turned into this great thing, but we didn't have enough time to really delve into it. So the producer of the conference and I started talking and he said, why, you know, let's make a show out of it. And I said, with who? And he said, you. And I went, oh, <laughs> me? He said, well, yeah, who else? And I was like, okay. So now we have unique voices. And mm -hmm. so it's just like one thing just, you know, was like happening after the other. And, um, and then the thing with Nick Casey, mm -hmm. you know, it was like, hey, I'll cover, you know, uh, e equality fashion week. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. You know, and then so, something else will come from that. And something else will come from that. And I think the thing is, as long as we keep our eyes open, right? Because they always say when opportunity knocks, answer the door. Yeah. Answer the door. Yeah. Uh, but I think for everybody, it, you know, everybody's journey is different. Everybody's um, the needs are different. And I think that for me, it's always been, how can I help people? Yes. How, you know, how do I serve? Because I really do believe that I was put on this planet to serve. Um, and so that's what I do. Yeah, But you do more also. You're also a musician. I'm a musician, yes. And you have a nonprofit. that you I have a nonprofit, yes. <laughs> Want to talk a little about that? 
Sure. Um, so we have Unmasking Lafayette, and I co-founded that with um, Michelle Zaremba. And it started out being for domestic violence survivors. Um, and it's since evolved to organizations in our community that tackle social issues. Mm -hmm. um, so every year we choose a, a, an organization um, for two years. So we did domestic violence, then it was uh, Hartford House, and they um, Hartford House uh, helps kids that are victims of or witnesses of crime. Um, and they're an amazing organization. And then we did Six Alarm Peer Support, which is you know first responders. Um, and now we, we did Pride. So we're doing Pride this year, and then next year we'll do Pride again. And then we're gonna go full circle and go back to domestic violence, because it'll be our 10th ball not our 10th year, it's like our 11th year. Um, M Michelle and I were talking about this because COVID kind of, yeah, we didn't have a ball it. one year and it kind of, yeah. Um, but again, it's all about how do you give back? You know, after being homeless and being um, at a shelter that I'm not gonna name anymore because they're not who they used to be. Um, so I don't wanna give them credit um, because the people that help me aren't there anymore. However. For me, it was always about when I get to that point, I want to be able to give back. You know, 19-year-old kid riding the Long Island Railroad to sleep at night, right? Riding the subways, you know, getting on the E-train at like, you know, Continental Avenue and, you know, waking up wherever, or the F-train and then waking up at Coney Island, um, you know, to, to sleep and stay warm. Um, and looking out, like every night I look out my patio door and I look at the woods and I thank the universe, yeah. you know, because I remember riding the trains and looking in people's homes going, man, you know, I wish I could be in that warm home. Mm -hmm. Of course, now not knowing what was going on in those homes, you know, it's a different <laughs> story, right? But, um, you know, just really being grateful every day for where I am and you know, what I have, my wife, oh my God, like I always say, I don't know what I did right to deserve her, but I'm glad I did it because she's my rock. That's, it's all amazing. And, and you've taken the parts, all of the parts and, yeah. you know, woven them into this, this new, this life that fits you. Yeah. Yeah. That and it's, it's you never would have just never would have dreamed you know and uh i know i know you know <laughs> and i feel grateful and blessed every single day so if i can help somebody i do and i have people um saying well so and so is going to take advantage of you and it's like well if they do you know on to the next thing but you know for me um like my clients know that it's not transactional. Yeah. It is not, you know, for me, it's about the relationship and how can I help you? And, you know, if I don't care about you, I can't work for you. And that sounds terrible, no, but if I our understand. values don't align, right? And I don't really care about you, then I don't care about your business, success, which is yeah. terrible, but it's it's yeah. true. If my heart's not in it, I can't do it. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Well, it's a thing. You know, we, we have that. <laughs> and I'm still not as bad as you with the accent. I'm just going to throw that out there. I have my, I have my moments, but you know. <laughs> I'm still a little, I'm still a little off from last week. I know, but thank God. Um, but um, they got you in when they did. Yeah. Um, but I, I love all of the things that you do. And I love how you really pulled together things that, you know, could have been really hard or could have held you back, you know? And you've built a life uh, that not only supports you and your wife and your dogs and your dreams, but, um, you know, you've built ways for it to support other people and for it to be bigger than you. Oh, yeah. Well, it is bigger than me. Yeah. I, I think that um, the first thing that I think of when I meet somebody is, how, how can I help you? Um, and, you know, how, how can I support you? Um, because 
it, it is bigger. So there was a, um, a meme that I posted and I can't remember the name of the process, mycelium something. I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, you know, a physicist or, or a, a scientist or anything, but there's that thing that connects us all, right? So the roots in the forest, you know, connect, are connected to all of the trees. And when one tree is hurting, they get together and they, you know, give it water and they, you know, give it food and they help it live. And I really feel that that's what we're on this planet to do. And it, it saddens me to see that there's a portion of the people that just want to destroy everything when we have, we who want to see everything grow um, and, and flourish and see people that are less fortunate than us, you know, help, help them out because I've been there. Yeah. I know what it's like, you know, are there lazy people out there? A hundred percent. But more often than not, all people need is like a hand. A hand. They need somebody right. to believe in them. That's it. Because I mean, I really believe that um, when we can hold that space to believe in somebody before they could believe in themselves is like the greatest gift that you can give someone. Oh, I mean, a hundred percent. You know, when um, when we do marketing for my clients, it's everybody always talked about pain points, pain points, and it's like, no, don't don't talk about that. That's not. <laughs> it's like today. it's <laughs> negative marketing, and I hate negative marketing. It doesn't have to be about that. It no, it could just be about, you know, what do you, you want? Have, right, <laughs> you know, there's something that's missing. What's missing? Let's figure it out. Yeah, you know, um, I did. I did a post um, a while back, and it was um, about oh gosh, what the heck was it? Um, you know, positive marketing, where you know instead of telling somebody what they suck at, tell mm -hmm. them what they're doing right, mm -hmm. and then build on that. Yeah, and let okay. them continue what they're doing right, and the stuff that they don't know, mm -hmm. you help with. That's what you're. Yeah. That's what you're there for. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have to be negative and you don't have to make people feel crappy about themselves to get their business. I mean, I've, I've like seen so many people be like, whoa, you did that? And they're like, yeah, I know I suck. And they're like, yeah, you do. I'm going to help you. It's like, no, that's going to help you suck. <laughs> right. I'm going to help you suck even more. Um, but, I, you know, I, I, I kind of feel like we are we're we're stronger together. We're, oh. we're all stronger together. Right. And 100%. if you know, and I mean, you know, that. look at what you're doing with this, you know, the real 50 over 50 women. Um, you're giving women a platform that otherwise might not have one. No. So um, I mean, there's, there's women in this group that have like lists with 200 people and like, there's no, like, there's no list discrimination here. It's like, let's all be together. And yeah, you know, when you pull us all together and we're well over a million yeah. So bring your 200 people to this person's 20,000. Let's do it. <laughs> right. right. And, and you know, add what you can where you can. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's. Um, that's yeah. I mean, our voices need to be heard. Our stories need to be heard. Um, it, I mean, I was, we were chatting before the show. Um, today, Julia Louis-Dreyfus dropped the second season of her podcast, Wiser mm -hmm. Than Me, which I absolutely love. And there are so many parallels between that like Uber award-winning podcast and this little live stream that I'm doing. Right. And um, it's all the stories. I mean, I'm not interviewing Carol Burnett and Gloria Steinem. Maybe yet, someday. yet, yet. <laughs> but, um, you know, everybody's story matters. And there are such parallels, you yeah. know. There's a lot of the stuff that like Jane Fonda was saying that we're saying in these shows too. And it's just, it blows my mind every time. I think that we all go through the same stuff. The only thing is, is they make a hell of a lot more money than us and they're, you know, they're celebrities. I mean, I think that anytime I meet a celebrity, and I've met so many celebrities and people are like, oh my God, weren't you like blown away? And it's like, no, because they're people. They're, they just, they're in a different profession, right? Mm -hmm. um, is it cool? Yeah, but you know, I don't, I don't fangirl. Yeah. Um, the the one person I fangirled over, and 
you know, we'll probably get eviscerated for this was Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. Her, I fangirled over. I've met, I can't even tell you how many people. And, but other than that, it's like, for me, you know, I'm a musician. Mm -hmm. I go watch heart, you know, I go watch any of the, you know, Joan Jett, like any Etheridge, whoever, you know, I go see. Um, and I can't just watch the show. It's like, oh, wait, they went off there. Or, oh, man, she's having a bad night. Or, mm -hmm. you know, or, oh, that was amazing. I wish I could, you know, do that. Or, ooh, we're going to do that song in, you know, our next thing. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, they do all the same things. They just get paid a lot more money for it. And, and the, you know, they have notoriety, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ride the coattails. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> because there's so many more stories and, uh, you know, it's just, it's been a year now and the conversations that um, I've had the, the honor to be part of, to hear, to share. Um, so it's just an absolute privilege and um, they are life changing. I mean, I've had people reach out to me of all ages, of all genders and, um, just saying that that's what they needed to hear right in that moment. And how did you know I felt that way? And I mean, just, there's just so many people that need to know this. I mean, the stories that we're sharing in so many cases are the things that people didn't tell us. Like, like, what did you right. learn riding that E train at three o'clock in the morning? What did you learn? What were the lessons? Share them. People, somebody might need to hear that. I mean, you know, it it was survival, right? It was, um, I remember waking up one, one, I fell asleep on the train and they all thought I was a cop. It was like the funniest thing. I was like probably 90 pounds soaking wet. And I had this like little blue bomber jacket. Like I didn't look like a homeless person, mm. you know, because I, I just, I, I didn't like, I always cared about how I looked, which was like hilarious. Um, sister Amy, who was, um, the head of the shelter that I went to used to always laugh because I always had like the best sneakers. It was like, <laughs> that was my thing was, you know, I, I had to have nice shoes or, you know, whatever it was. Um, but, you know, I woke up and this guy was trying to take my watch off mm -hmm. of my arm. And I just kind of looked at him and I'm like, what are you doing? And he ran away and he was afraid of me. And that made me realize that I had this power. Mm -hmm. And if I had the power to, to scare somebody like that, what am I like? Why am I letting myself do this? Why, you know, what am I, what am I doing? Um, and that next morning I, you know, I got off the train and I made a phone call. It was, it was to the runaway youth hotline. Um, and that was the beginning of the end of my homelessness because mm -hmm. I got the help that I needed. Um, yeah. Before that, I didn't feel like I was worth it. Um, like I said, somebody has to believe in you before you could believe in yourself. You know, it's, it's so true when you have somebody and even sometimes that doesn't help. It depends on how deep the wounds are, right? You know, the, the amount of trauma that we experience as, as kids really, um, I think is what shapes us as adults. Mm -hmm. And it depends on how deep that goes, because I had so many people that believed in me, but that tried to help me. And I just like bit the hand that fed me. Mm. It wasn't until I was ready that I was ready. Yeah. But when I was ready, I was ready. And then I looked back at everything and it was like, Ugh. so that's why it's my mission to help as many people as I can, because um, I know it's not easy. I no, know it's, it's, not easy. easy. it's not easy. And, um, you know, like I, I agree with what you're saying as well. Like we're often not ready to let people help us. Mm -hmm. And um, that's one of the reasons I feel really strongly about this too, because I just feel like, you know, if these stories are out there, they're going to help people when they need them. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know how we did it, but it's already 30 minutes. Wow. Well, with us, that's, I know we can go for three or four hours. So, um, is there any like little wisdom bomb you want to leave people with? A wisdom bomb. Um, just keep your eyes and ears open. Um, 
you know, there are so many different professions that we're in, you know, entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs, especially um, more times than not, we're not aware of what's right in front of us. Um, just try to keep your eyes and ears open. And the other thing that I'm going to say, and it's corny as hell, just be kind, yeah. be kind to each other. We need that more than ever now. I agree. Thank you. <clears throat> so connect with Iris on gasstovecreative.com. She's also very active on LinkedIn and um, follow all of the amazing things that she's doing because she is like a multimedia phenom at this point. <laughs> <Gosh>. <laughs> and I just adore her and I'm always happy to spend time with her. If you have any questions on the replay or comments that you want to share, tag us. We will come back and we will keep the conversation going. And we will be back next week with more. So everybody have a great Wednesday. And thank you, Iris, for spending some time with us today. Thanks for the opportunity.